Hello. How are you guys doing tonight? Well, it is the eve of my sobriety birthday. And by the time that you guys are watching this, um, I will have, if I make it, 24 years sober. And it seems so completely surreal. And um, so yeah. And um, I am on my way over to Tanya's. Because little Tucker <laughs> is going to the spa because he is getting a spa treatment tomorrow. No, he's getting groomed tomorrow. So he's going to stay there tonight. And um, he is so we can get up early in the morning and get groomed and be ready by early afternoon, which is fantastic for me because I don't have to get up super early then. Yeah. Today has been a really, really good day. I woke up. I actually listened to a lot more of that book, The Afterlife of Holly Chase. I didn't listen to a lot more of it, but I listened to like an hour of it. And it is really, really good. Like, um, it's so different than anything. I, I don't know. I thought it was just going to be like a retelling of A Christmas Carol. And it is so not that. And, um, it's really good. So, um... It's so much deeper than that. It's it's hilarious, actually. So anyway, uh, if you're looking for a Christmas book, a funny Christmas book, um, The Afterlife of Holly Chase, I don't know who it's by, check that out. And then, um, so yeah, so I got up today, and Alex and I went to brunch. We had a fantastic brunch. And I stuck to my diet all day today, even though, like, I mean, I had a cheap meal, but I didn't even really eat that bad at brunch. I only ate, like, half of my omelet, maybe a little bit more than that. There were so many red onions in it, I just couldn't stomach all of them. And so I um, ate half my omelet, and then I had half of a bagel, and then they brought arugula instead of potatoes, and, um, because we had a different waitress tonight, or today, and they usually just, like, know our order there by now, and, um, so she came back out. She was like, oh, they told me that you wanted potatoes, not arugula. And I was like, yeah, it's cool, whatever. And she was like, oh, no, 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 I'm going to bring the potatoes. So she brought the potatoes out. But by the time that she did, I'd already kind of eaten some of the other stuff. And so I was pretty full. And so I literally only ate, like, I don't know, maybe a half a cup of potatoes. And, um, but I did have my coffee. Here's my coffee. Which was delicious. It was chocolate fudge coffee today. And, um... Let's see. So then after that, my dad wanted us to help him move some stuff, I guess, from his office um, to his house, this rug. And so <clears throat> we, he kept on texting me and he was like, waiting for the Colts game to be over, waiting for the Colts game to be over. And I was like, okay, we're not doing anything. Alex was so tired. And I was like, just, you know, let me know when you're done and we will uh, head on over there. So he texted me about 4.15 and he was like, um, can you guys meet me at the office? And I was like, yeah. So I really honestly thought um, that I was gonna get all these videos done today. I had all these videos I wanted to do. I was really excited because I had this video that I wanted to do with Alex where I, um, I was gonna do a video on my main channel. I was gonna talk about like what it's like to be with a person in sobriety. And then I was gonna talk about what it's like to be with somebody that's not in sobriety and somebody, you know, when you're in like a mixed relationship like that, as far as sobriety goes. Cause I get so many questions from people um, that ask me, you know, like, uh, like, what's it like that Alex drinks? Is it hard for you? And then I get so many people that are like, well, my boyfriend or girlfriend's in sobriety and I don't know like this. And I get so many emails about that actually, you know, about relationships and recovery. And so I thought it would be interesting to do it on there. And, and honestly, I just wanted to kind of like do it like, you know, like film it and not think through it because I really wanted to get Alex's like response on there because I we talk about it but we don't talk about it as much now as we did when we first got together and so I kind of wanted to just get on there and see what he had to say today compared to like how it was back then and um and then I had a Peterisms video about sobriety that I wanted to film and I had all these books or all these videos I booked a video that I wanted to film I had all these videos I was going to do today a review video so then we were, um, when we got to the office, my dad was like, hey, do you, um, 
like we were going over the house. He's like, you can hang out at the house, can't you, for a little while? Because my stepmom just recently had knee surgery, and so she's kind of like bed rested right now. And he was like, you know, it'd be really nice if you guys could like hang out for a little bit. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about making videos today. I'm just going to hang out with my family. And so um, we helped to move the stuff in there, and um, we it was like a rug and this uh, cart thing. But anyway, so he, uh, we go to their house and we like go in there and we like, my stepmom's watching Hallmark Christmas movies and we sat on the edge of the bed and we like, Alex and my dad and I, and we just sat there and talked to her with like the dog. The dog was like running around the whole time. They got this new dog this summer and he's so adorable. He's this little Yorkie, his name is Pickles. And his legs are like really long for a Yorkie, it's hilarious. And so it's like this, and then he's got this like little body on these <laughs> tall, these four tall legs. It's, he's so cute. And I kept on saying to him, I said, do you wanna come and have a sleepover? Pee Pee would love to have you. And Alex was like, I think he and Boo Radley would get along a lot better. He kind of looks like a small Boo Radley, it's hilarious. And, um, but he's absolutely adorable. And um, so, yeah. But we had a good time. We stayed over there for like two, three hours. And um, then we got home and Alex was like so tired. He was like, I think I'm gonna watch um, a TV show and then I'm gonna go to bed. I mean, my husband was in bed by nine o'clock tonight, if not 8.30. He was like out and um, he was so exhausted. And I was like, okay. And I'm actually kind of like awake tonight. So I'm probably gonna split this uh, vlog up a little bit and listen to some of my audiobook and then vlog and a little bit like that. Because I don't want to just like listen to like two, three straight hours of it, you know what I mean? Anyway, it's been a really good day. We were sitting there, it was interesting because my dad and my stepmom, like I said to them, I said, do you guys know where you were like 24 years ago tonight? And they knew like instantly what I was talking, excuse me, what I was talking about. And my dad was like, I'll never forget that night. And um, they were telling like Alex some stories from their perspective. And my stepmom was talking about how when, because she was the one that took me into the treatment that morning. And um, she said, I remember, and I said, what was I like? And she was like, well, what was really weird was I knew how out of control you were because I had, you know, witnessed it for so many years. She said, but the woman that was doing your assessment, she was like, he's not drunk enough to come in. Like, you know, and I don't know what he's gonna test positive on his drug screen, but like, he's not bad enough to come into treatment. And my stepmom was like, he's completely gone right now. And she's like, no. And my stepmom's like, yeah, he's in a blackout right now. Like he's completely gone. And they did a BAL on like a blood alcohol level on me. And I was like, it almost like, later the doctor told me it was like death level. I should have been dead. It was so high off the charts. Um, which is crazy, you know? So, um, scary. I mean, I can't believe that, you know, I'm here today. And then she was like, she was asking you all these questions about all these different drugs you had used and tried. And she was like, you just kind of nod. And she said, you know, after like the eighth or 10th drug, she's like, I just got up and started crying. And I walked out of the room. She's like, I just couldn't hear it anymore. She was like, it just was too much. And um, she was like, you know, you didn't want to stay. And you were like, please don't make me stay. Please don't make me stay. And she was like, I begged you to stay for you. And she was like, I was crying. And she was like, and then you agreed to stay. So I don't remember that. I kind of remember sitting there in the chair. Like, I, like as I'm telling the story, I can see us kind of like sitting in this room. But like, I mean, that is a far off memory. So, yep. Yep. The holiday in the holiday in Could Tony Parker car any closer? Okay. Um give me just a second and I'll be right back. Okay. Tanya's turning around. 
So we'll wait till she turned out. She gave me a bottle of water. I'm waiting for you. you, can go a bit. you want me to go first? Okay. Bye, Tanya Jean Appelstein. Bye, Prettiest girl I've ever seen. <laughs> Look at the moon, Tanya. It's so pretty. I love the land that Tanya has her kennel on. It is absolutely gorgeous out here. We've seen coyotes out there and everything. Okay, where should I drive tonight? This cup is gonna drive me crazy, I can tell already. What is rattling back there? Tiny and I stood around for a little bit and talked. Tucker was so good. He like, so, the big crate that we have for them is, it's like this huge crate. Um, we have blankets and everything in there. Boo Radley loves to go in there. He just goes, we leave it open. So they just go in there and sleep and sit and stuff. But mostly Boo Radley goes in there and sleeps during the day. And um, so anyway, uh, I put Tucker in the one that Tanya wanted him in tonight. It was back by her office. And um, like where they keep the groomed dogs and like the, the like when we take our dogs in there it's Tanya and her uh, husband and son used to live at the kennel and so it's like back there where like their bedrooms were and stuff they have like these two huge like things and so she opened it and I said um okay Tucker go in your house and he looked up at me and then he ran in there and he just sat down on the blanket it was so cute I said okay sweetheart I said I'll be back tomorrow I love you have fun at the spa and he just looked up at me he was so sweet he is such a good boy Tanya was like, he is the, <laughs> he barks so much. And I go, I know he does, but he didn't bark tonight. He was very sweet. <laughs> so anyway. I wanted to ta have Tanya on my vlog a little bit tonight and talk about our sobriety stories together, but I know she's so exhausted. I don't want to. She was at Walmart. She said she spent like $274 and that she had to scan everything herself. That's the person that would drive me nuts, okay? Tanya scanning $274 worth of stuff is literally, I'm the person standing behind her with like one Sharpie. And I would lose my mind because she literally is this person that like picks up something and looks at it and goes like barcode bag. But Walmart only ever has one line open, thanks Johnny. <laughs> one line open this late at night, and then they're, I don't even know if they have that open anymore. I think they just have the scan it yourself, like Meyer does, because Meyer doesn't have any lines open late at night either. That's why Tanya, does, she doesn't like to go to Meyer, she likes to go to Walmart, because they have the one line. And um, she's like, I can never find the barcodes, or they don't work, and she was like, I'm just not any good at the, the self-scan stuff. I'm like, you're not any good at it. I like to sift that stuff through. I'm like, I could work here. I'm not so good at this stuff. <laughs> I take pride in my scanning skills. So, anyway. What is rattling? Something in my car is rattling and it's driving me crazy. I like lean back and then I hear it up there. I don't know what that is. Anyway, it's weird to think 24 years ago tonight I started it on this new journey in my life, you know? It's weird to think that like you never know. Like whatever the day brings you could be like the start of like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's easy for me to look at that in kind of like a lot of sad ways too. Like the last time that my mom went in the hospital, I mean, I had no clue that was gonna be, you know, the last time that she'd gone to the hospital because there have been two previous times. What is Can you hear that? Oh no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Did it 
it stop? Oh, that's a little better. Um, my mom had gone into the hospital twice before she went in the last time. And both times, they had discharged her with um, dehydration and didn't know what was going on, really. And the second time she was scared to go home. Like, she was like, it bothers me that they don't really know what's going on with me. Which is interesting because when we took her, like, the very first hospital that she went to, which was not in my dad's hospital system, and so he wanted her in one that he could, like, talk to the doctors, make sure she was getting good care and all that kind of stuff. The first hospital that she went to, they diagnosed her with uh, Wegner's vasculitis, uh, granulatosis, and, um... So they knew exactly what it was. And we gave all that paperwork to the hospital, to the doctors, everything. Like, you know, I don't know. It's just crazy when I look back on all of that. And But, like, when I, I think about that last day, you know, that she went, the day that my dad called me and she had, like, fallen in the shower and she was unconscious. Like, I didn't think to myself, like, this is the last time that, you know, and then she was conscious for a couple days, you know? And then I remember... I kind of don't remember some of it, you know? Like, that's what's crazy. It's like, I remember talking to the doctors, and I remember... Um, I remember them talking to me about being like you know, the soul next of kin and what that meant. And I remember when she went into a coma. Um, I, 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 like, I remember bits and pieces of that. I re honestly, what I remember a lot of is just sitting in the hospital room and people coming in and out a lot. Um, because we would kind of do these, you know, like my aunt had it set up that people would be like sitting there with her, you know, so many hours of the day during visitation. Um, and this is, mind you, while she's in a coma. And um, I remember my dad coming in there on a fr like a Friday night. He was like, what are you doing here? And I was like, sitting with mom, you know, and Kathy told me I should. He was like go home. She wouldn't want you here, and I don't even know that she knows that you're here, you know? I mean, we don't know what people remember in a coma, but I just remember sitting there, like, not reading, not, like, and, you know, yes, we were phone-obsessed back then, but we weren't as phone-obsessed as we are now, and so, like, I wouldn't just, you wouldn't just sit and be, like, on your phone, you know what I mean? It was a different, you know, it was a different generation back then, and I just remember just sitting in this, I can see the chair sitting next to the bed and just sitting there and... You never know, like, you know, what tomorrow is gonna, you know, what's gonna happen. You never know the next person that you don't meet is gonna be the greatest friend that you're gonna have for the rest of your life, you know? Just like with Tanya. You don't know that. I mean, hell, when I started my booktube channel, I had no idea what it, that it would turn into, you know, like having five channels and all of the people that I've been able to meet and talk to and all of you guys out there. Just, I mean, I never in a million years could have ever foreseen what this was going to, you know. Um, and very much the same way with my sobriety. Yeah, I had gone into treatment before, but I had never gone into treatment in, like, a middle-of-the-night kind of, um, you know, like, rescue effort, so to speak. And I remember waking up. Ugh, I was adjusting it. Okay. But I remember um, waking up and like walking out to the nurse's station and the woman that had been my neighbor, like the whole time that I was growing up, her daughter was like my best friend when I'm growing up. And um, by that time they had, I think moved out of that house. But she was the detox nurse. Well, I didn't even know that she worked there, you know? And um, so I went up to her and I was like, 
like I, I, I don't need to be, I think I said like I don't need to be here, I need to get out of here or something like that. And um, she was like, you're really sick. And like my vitals and stuff had come back at that point. And I was like, no. And she's like, Peter, you're really, really sick. You need to stay here. And um, she like, they like kept your cigarettes and stuff for you back in the day. Like you could go up there and ask for them. And so like she gave me like a cigarette or a pack of cigarettes or something. But anyway, she's like, go down to the lounge, get a cup of coffee. De the detox unit was like the only unit you got like real coffee in the hospital too. Like the rest of the hospital was all decaf. And she was like, and you know, and I just remember going down there and like sitting there, like the TV was on in the corner and there was this other woman in the room. And I remember looking out window and it just was like blizzard conditions outside. It was like snowing like crazy and I was like, I am so screwed. Like, how did I get myself into this? I remember I walked by this full length mirror and um, I actually wrote this. There's a blog entry that I wrote about this. I at one point had um, turned, like the, I was writing this story about going into treatment. I have like a hundred pages written of this. I have never decided if I'm gonna like ever pursue it or not, but it's like, part of the problem is it's been so long since I was in treatment, you know? But I walked by uh, this full length mirror and I turned and I looked at myself and I was just like, I was like in hospital pajamas like this robe, like this hospital robe and these footies. And I just remember looking at myself and I just was this like tragic mess, you know? And I was like, you know, I had always had this idea in my head. And, you know, when I was growing up, like I idolized my mom and her friends, you know, to some degree that, you know, they would sit there and their like hair was perfect and they'd laugh and they would, you know, be dancing and the, you know, they'd either be sitting there and having like really long, deep conversations with 20 candles lit, you know, and um, fire going and they'd be playing, you know, Led Zeppelin or you know, Bob Dylan or Arlo Guthrie or something in the background talking, you know, like, or, um, you know, they'd be sitting there and they'd be like dancing around before they went out, you know, and, like one of the nights I would have a babysitter or something and they'd be dancing to like Thelma Houston, Don't Leave Me This Way. And, and I'd be like curled up in the corner of the couch just watching all of this. And it was all so glamorous to me, you know? And I used to always refer to my mom as this, I would call her a pretty drinker because she always looked so pretty like when she was drinking. And, and my mom had this way that she smoked that was very much like Betty Davis. And, um, like, the way that she would, like, inhale and exhale. And I can remember, like, just thinking that my mom was, like, so, like, beautiful and gorgeous, like, in, in that element. Which is interesting that the thing that I ended up hating the most is the thing that I was, like, most intrigued about with her. You know what I mean? And, um, because, you know, like, I would see that, but then I would also see the opposite of that that was true, which was her sitting there sobbing her eyes out for hours on end with headphones on, listening to music, and I just wouldn't even go anywhere near her, you know, when I was a little kid, because I was just like, you know, she would just sit there with a notepad and just, like, journal and journal and journal and listen to music and smoke one cigarette after another and just, like... You know, I can remember there being like this bottle of wine, like the, the big ones with the handles on it. I can remember that like just sitting there next to her and um, she had this table uh, in the library that was like, it was like the stereo was to the right on these bookshelves and to the left, she had this little table. And so this was the setup that she had in that corner. She had, we had built, built in bookshelves in the whole room, which was why it was like a, a library. And she had the stereo and the speakers all set up over there. Well, one stereo was on the other side, and the stereo, or the speaker was on one side, the other speaker was this side. And then she had that black leather and chrome chair that I have in my bedroom that I said I don't ever want to get rid of. But then to the left, she had this, like, spool table or spool cabinet. Do you know what I'm talking about? We actually have that in our garage because I need to get rid of it, and I don't know where to get rid of it. Um, so, anyway... It's very cool. It's like an old spool cabinet they used back in the day. Um, but, like, she had bought it at some, like, I don't know, 
like auction or something and used it as a table, but I could just remember her sitting there in that corner, you know, and playing one record after another or having records on repeat. And um, so I always kind of dreamed to be this like pretty drinker like my mother, you know, and I, I think whenever we look at situations like that, you know, I think we often romance it up and look at like the good parts of it, you know? And it was actually hard for me, like, after my mom and I got sober, you know, it was hard for me to, to look back and talk to her about those times because, like, I didn't want her to have to live in those memories, if that makes sense. So, anyway, I can remember, like, getting ready and, you know, being buzzed and thinking I looked so good, you know what I mean? And, like, I just, I just felt warm and glowing and I felt pretty. Like, I felt really pretty. And, um... I remember walking by there, you know, and thinking to myself, um, I had like fallen or like hit my head or if it hit my face, like when I hit the ditch, um, because I had like a bruise like right here. And I remember like walking by the window, the full length mirror and turning, it was like in the hallway in between two rooms. I remember turning and looking and I could see it. And then all the like the pajamas and stuff. And I thought, well, you got your wish. You're a pretty drinker. Like I can remember thinking like that exactly. Like, well, I guess you got your wish. You're a pretty drinker. And um, like, it just was so surreal to me. Like when I woke up that next day, I thought, I mean, like I always knew I had a problem. But I always, like, really realistically, like, for anybody out there that is, like, in denial and thinks they can stop this shit on their own, like, you can't. You know, I had convinced myself that I could stop whenever I wanted to. I could not stop. There is a scene in the movie when a man loves a woman. If you've never seen the woman, that movie, it is so fantastic. And it's with Andy Garcia plays the husband. Um, what's her name? Plays the wife. Meg Ryan. Oh, my God. She plays an alcoholic so fantastically. It's mostly about after treat, like after treatment and like what that is like, that coming home and stuff and their relationship. It is so, it is such a fantastic movie. I cannot tell you how many times I've watched it. It's called When a Man Loves a Woman. Especially like all the promises that she makes to him and stuff before she uh, goes into treatment. But there's a scene when she's been there like two days and she's going through major withdrawals, which, you know, we don't talk a lot about in society about how bad the withdrawals from alcohol are, but there's some of the, the worst withdrawals ever are from alcohol. And um, there's a scene when she's like talking to this counselor or nurse and she's like, you don't know what it's like. And she's crying and she's like, you have no idea what this is like. And the woman's like, I've gone through it myself. I know what it's like, which is why it's so important for people in recovery to work in treatment facilities. Um, and I cannot tell you as a counselor how many times I encountered people that would not talk to some, but they would only talk to me because they wouldn't talk to somebody that hadn't gone through it themselves. And um, I never felt that way. I was, you know, kind of like, hey, whatever you got to tell me, tell me. But um, I remember that, you know, seeing that scene and I was like, that's exactly what it's like. I mean, I had some moments like that in treatment where I just thought I was going to lose my shit, especially in detox. And I had a long, long detox too. And um, it was bad. detoxing and like being so hungry and them bringing like because they on the detox unit they would bring the food down like we wouldn't go to the cafeteria and eat until we were moved over to the rehab unit and they would bring the food down and I can remember I don't know why but I'm seeing broccoli in my head I can remember sitting there and eating and just like as soon as I would eat like five minutes later just like vomiting it everywhere like I couldn't hold anything down and um it just was I think I really was very very fearful too um, I think I just was very fearful very 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 fearful 
I didn't know what my life was gonna, I was very obsessed with what my life was gonna look like after. I actually, um, I would like, so I would like get out of group when I was on like the rehab unit, like that. So the first week I was like in detox. The second week I went into the rehab unit. I was there like three weeks and then I got out three and a half weeks. And the second week that I was there, I would like get out of group and I would go to the phone, the, the pay phone. And I would like call these people. And I had dated this guy that summer. And um, I was constantly wanting to know what he was doing and all this kind of stuff. And um, so I was calling all my friends and checking, 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 checking. And she had kind of caught on to it. Somebody had told her or something what was going on. I was getting all these notes. Like they would like tape these notes to the counter that would say like Peter on it. And then I would open it and it would say like Judy Smith called you. You know, call Judy Smith at this number. Because you couldn't call directly to somebody. You had to like call the nurse's station, leave a message, and then they would give the message to me. So I was like constantly like on the pay phone, right? And I remember she, I was talking to somebody and she came over and she just hung up the phone. And I was like, hey, what are you doing? And she's like, you're done with this. And I go, excuse me? And she's like, you're done with this. Like this, no, we're done. We're done with this. And, um... You know, it's interesting because I'm friends with my counselor today. She's not actually a whole lot older. I was, uh, you know, 22 at the time that I went into treatment, and she had just graduated with her master's degree and was straight out of graduate. She went to college graduate school, so she would have been like 25, 26 at the time. And um, so she's only like four or five years older than me. And um, I, every time we ever talk about me being sober, and I always, you know. Uh, call her on my Friday birthday. I'll call her tomorrow. And I thank her for my life, you know? And, um, but she always says the same thing. She's like, if I had to put money on who was going to make it, you would never have been the one. She said, you were never, I, I never in a million years would have guessed it. It's never the ones you think are going to make it. And she said, you know, you just were so resistant, Peter, you know, like, and she goes, you really didn't start listening until that last week when you were terrified to get out of there, you know? And, um, I think it's crazy how, like, we let days, you know, when weeks go by and we think, like, they don't really matter or they don't really mean anything, you know, like, oh, this day I didn't really do anything. Though. And I think about that, you know, collectively that those days that I was in treatment, I mean, have so profoundly changed my life, you know, the, the entire direction of my life, the entire direction of my life. I mean, allowed me to have a relationship with both of my parents, um, allowed me to have healthy relation, romantic relationships, allowed me to have healthy friendships, you know, gave me a new language to live, um, it's crazy when I look at all the opportunities that I've had in my life and how they've come to me as um, a result of sobriety and all the people that I've met. And I don't know, it's just, it's crazy when I look back on all of it, you know? Alex was so cute today. He was like, um, we were at brunch. He was like, now what are you going to do special for your sobriety birthday tomorrow? And I was like, I, I, I said, not a whole lot. I said, Tuesday night's my home group. So you usually announce, like, I mean, you, a lot of people go and like, you know, get a keychain or a token on their actual birthday, but I'm just going to wait till my home group night and announce it. And then my sponsor, who doesn't usually go to that meeting, she's coming over there. The, the three of us are going to go out to dinner afterwards with Tanya. Um, I may ask Alex if he wants to come too, but uh, he doesn't love sitting around listening to all the recovery talk <laughs> and all the names that he doesn't know and stuff. It gets kind of boring for him, you know. But what happened to so-and-so? Oh, they moved to Florida, you know. Um, but he was like, are you going to do anything special tomorrow? And I said, I don't think so. And he goes, really? Nothing? And I go, well, I have my personal training appointment. <laughs> and he goes, but you're not going to do anything special for your sobriety birthday? I said, no. I said, just be still. You know, and 
think back on what it was like and be, you know, thankful. And I said what I really should do is sit down and work on my inventory a little bit, but I can tell you that probably isn't what I will be doing tomorrow. He just laughed. I said it's not like really a day. I, I, I don't see it as like a day to like celebrate. I look at it as more of like a day to reflect, you know, if that makes sense. Um, I have always kind of wondered, you know, like you guys know I'm a believer and like spiritual, I'm a spiritual person and whatever. I'm always kind of, I've always kind of wondered why that day, you know, like why December 17th? I don't know anything about tools. 
Except for when people say you're a tool. <laughs> And then we never pulled names for Alex's family, so I guess I don't know who I am gonna do this year. I don't know, I'll just help him buy stuff for everybody. And then um, I, my dad and my stepmom said they're not doing a whole lot for Christmas because uh, my stepmom can't get out of bed. So um, they were like, we'll just be here if you guys wanna stop by. So I don't know, we'll probably wait until she's feeling a little bit better and then go out to, we usually go out to eat somewhere for Christmas. And then, I don't know what else. I think that's about it, Tanya. She's easy though. I can't, I mean, I could buy Tanya a trucker hat or I could buy her, you know, a pair of socks or some makeup. I think I'm gonna get her um, a makeup palette. She is like really wanting to try some different makeup. <laughs> I'm laughing because there, she's gotten more interested in it since I like started doing, you know, videos about beauty influencers. Now she watches all these beauty influencers and so she's real intrigued. I mean, she always has worn makeup and liked makeup, but I don't think like she knew a whole lot more like, you know, past just like what she would go and buy and things like that. And now she like knows the palette names and she knows this and is this pigmented or is that pigmented? And I'll say something to her and she'll be like, well, I watch four videos on this. And, and I'm like, you watch four videos on it. And she's like telling me, she's like, I watched so-and-so's review. And I'm like, who's that? She's like, I don't know. She's like this beauty influencer with like 80,000 subscribers. I love her. She's great. And I'm like, really? What's her name? And she's like, oh, she's fantastic. I'm like, you need to give me some of those names. I'll shout those people out in videos. And, um, so I want to get her like a palette or something fun. And a couple people have recommended some things to me. Um, but book club gal, vice president gal pal, Mel, she actually gave me the name of um, a palette to get. I think it was an Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. I'm going to turn around here. I'm going to start listening to my audio book. Heading back home a little bit. I will say of all of the palettes that I have reviewed this year, and let's just be for real, okay, I don't know a whole lot about uh, makeup, but that is gonna probably change in the next year. Because I have somebody that has been willing to teach me that knows a lot about make, makeup. And um, have I talked about the girl that Alex is friends with and she's the reason why we got to dance on stage for Britney Spears? So anyway, she did two tours with Britney Spears, world tours, and she was her hair and makeup person. Um, I think the first one she was hair and makeup. She was either hair and makeup for one and then just makeup for the second, or she was, or vice versa, I can't remember. So anyway, um, but I had reached out to her like a year ago. And, oh, it's gonna stop, hold on. But I had reached out to her like a year ago and I, she like doesn't, she's not working it's this water bottle she's not working anymore because she uh i think she has two kids now and got married but anyway i was like do you want to do a video with me and talk about like you know having gone on tour with britney spears i said can you talk about that she's like yeah i think my contract's up and she's like she wouldn't care anyway i wouldn't say anything bad and i was like okay and i was like do you want to do a video and then we can like do a review of a palette or something she's like yeah i think that would be really fun and so we talked about doing that and we just never got together and did that and then um I actually have another friend of mine that was a celebrity makeup artist in LA. She moved from here to LA and then she moved back and she's back here now. And um, I had reached out to her and asked her if she wanted to do a video too. And she was like, yeah, I think that would be really fun. She was like, you know, we could just do some like, really like, uh, you know, like, soft male like men's looks on you that where like you see guys in movies and they don't just have it does it looks like they don't have any makeup on but they have like a little bit of makeup on just to like break things out i could show you how to do that stuff and i was like oh that'd be a fun video and then we could talk about like you know what celebrities you've worked on and things she's like oh i would love to do that that would be great um so those are been two videos in 2018 that i planned to film that i never filmed so i might do that in 2019 but i will say this having looked through all of the different palettes the Oh, the Alien palette, though, was gorgeous. It really was. I mean, you know, it's like, you don't have to know anything about, like, you know, paint to open up, like, paint and look at it. And you can know what colors are pretty or striking or bold compared to other colors. You know what I mean? Or what looks cheap and what doesn't. That Alien palette, those greens in there are gorgeous. They really, really are. But next to that, I have to say, 
the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina palette. It was the most beautiful palette that I, uh, like, I bought and gave away and reviewed this year, or reviewed, first impressions, whatever you want to call it. It was the prettiest. The Thirsty and the Life's a Drag were okay. I wouldn't say they were, I mean, just to look at them, you know? And then I have like one of the, the Jaclyn Hill palettes that Rich Lux sent me um, to use in a video. It's okay. It's like comes in the, it's part of the vault. But I would say the Norvina palette is probably the most beautiful palette that I opened and looked at this year. The Alien is by far the coolest packaging. It is just really, really cool packaging. Oh, you know what? The, uh, the James Charles palette, the James Charles Morphe palette was imp really impressive too. I didn't think about that. It was really nice. It's just really big. I can't, like for me, I always think about like the logistics of that stuff. Like where would you, I mean, you couldn't take it and put it in your purse, you know, unless you have some ginormous purse. It just went, what are you gonna do? Like whip out this palette, you know, like in the bathroom? Like, I don't know how realistic it is. So, but I don't know. A lot of people said it was totally realistic and they would use it. I don't know. I don't, you know, use makeup like that, so. All right, listen, I'm gonna listen to my audio book for a little while and um, I will be back. Um, oh, the moon is so pretty tonight. The moon's a harsh mistress. It was one of my mom's favorite songs ever. And I will be back in a little while after I've listened to a little bit of my book. And um, I will see you guys then. Bye. Okay, I'm back. I listened to my audiobook for a while. And then honestly, I just kind of like, I just like drove around in silence. And um, I was just like thinking to myself, you know, um, about the last 24 years of my life, you know, and before that, and um, I drove around for like 20 minutes, just kind of like in my head, and um, it was kind of weird, like what happened, you know, like, I don't know why, but like, what my stepmom, my stepmom said to me earlier today, I don't know if I shared this on here or not, but she said, um, we were talking about like the day that she took me into treatment that morning and uh, you know that when they, I think I did share it on here she said that you know they said like, he's not bad enough to come in and I then my I blew a blood alcohol level that should have been dead and that you know I'm sitting here and I'm just like they're asking me about all these drugs and I need them using or have used all these drugs, you know, and I was sitting here and I was like thinking to myself what like a typical day in my life looked like back then and, you know, not just, and, and, and it was weird because like for the time that I was in silence, just kind of like thinking to myself, um, it, it wasn't like a story it wasn't like my story it was I mean it is my story but it wasn't a story it was like I could remember living like being back there and I, I there wasn't a, really anything other than like heroin that I wouldn't use and in all honesty nobody ever offered it to me or tried to, and I think had they at the end, I probably would have used it, you know? And so I think back on, you know, the day, like I would get up, you know, late in the day and just start drinking right away and smoking weed and I was popping pills. I mean, I popped, a, I, I, I ate a lot of pills back then. And, um, you know, and then in the evenings I was doing cocaine like every day and I don't know, like I, I I feel like I talk about it so much that sometimes I kind of forget what it was really, really like. And I think this year especially, I really looked at it and I really looked at like how desperate that was and what a miracle it is that I'm still here. And I just had this moment like when I was driving that I was like, you know what? I was like, you can get through anything. 
Oh my god, my battery is dying. There's how can that possibly be? This is gonna be the shortest vlog in the entire world. But I was like, you know what? Like, this vlog is gonna be like 40 minutes, 35 minutes. I'm so upset. You guys, I'm sorry. I don't know why the battery's dying. Maybe it's because I had it off for like an hour in the car and it's cold, but um but you know, I had this moment where I was like, you know what, you've been through some really tough shit in your life and you can make it through anything. And if I was gonna give a message to anybody out there, what I would say is you can make it through anything, you know? We think we can't sometimes, I think, as human beings. I think sometimes we think this is the one that's gonna take me down. That's just not the case, you know? And if you're out there, and, and this is what I wanted to say, if you're out there and you're struggling watching this, you know, you're gonna get through this. I've had many times while using and since sober that I thought I just I can't go on one more day and I proved myself wrong and um, you're gonna make it through you just are you know and <clears throat> I may not be a great example of a lot of things in my life but I hope for people but I hope if one thing I can be a great example that if you believe in yourself hard enough you can persevere you can get through things you know and we're gonna lose people, people are gonna die, and um, we're gonna lose friends and romantic relationships and have to move and have financial hardships and illnesses and, but we're gonna get through it, you know? And if anything, I think that's the lesson that I've learned in 24 years, is that I'm gonna be okay we're all gonna be okay, you know? It, it may feel like shit right now, and I look back on that night that I went in there and that first week in treatment and the weeks leading up to treatment, the year leading up to treatment, and all, like the hell that I was living, and I, I remember thinking to myself, I, I don't care if I live one more day, I don't, it, it's not worth it anyway, and this is just, it, you know, I just didn't care about anything, and I just thought, I can't go on, I just can't keep on going on like this. And then I look at my life today, and I think, I just feel so blessed, I have friends, I have, you know, great family, I have a husband that is amazing, I have these dogs I love, you know, I have such close friends that I really care about, and they care about me, and I have my sobriety, and my home, and... And to some people, maybe that doesn't look like a lot, but to me, it sure as hell feels like a lot. And this vlog is so special to me because I get to share my life with you guys on here. And you're so supportive. And I feel like I know so many of you out there. And um, I just wanna thank you. This is just all one big part of my journey and I feel so blessed to be able to do this. And so before it blinks off, it's blinking, so I know it's gonna end any second, I wanna say good night and um, tomorrow I will bring a longer vlog for you guys, I promise. And um, I, I didn't think, I was happy about my birthday coming up and I was excited about it, but I didn't think I would feel as blessed as I feel in the middle of the night where 24 years ago my journey began and here I am, you know, 24 years later in the middle of the night again and I feel very, very blessed tonight and very serene. So I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.